starting at quarterbacks. All right, you got Tua going at San Francisco. You got him as your QB six. That's only one spot above the experts. Why are we even talking about this? If you have Tua, you're playing him, right? It's one of those things where my rankings are just – were tricky this week because I have fields like 30 spots above the ECR because I'm waiting for it to adjust for the yeah. injury. So I guess I could say Justin Fields plus 30. I do imagine I'm going to be higher on him because, again, emphasizing the fact that we just saw Jalen Hurts run all over this defense, and Fields has looked like the next like Michael Vick but bigger. He's been an absolute monster as a runner. I mean, what was it, 160 yards in back-to-back weeks, like over 100? Right around. He definitely had like 300 yards over two weeks. It's unbelievable what this guy has done on the ground. So I have no argument against Justin Where did Jalen Hurts' game come in? Was this like the three top quarterback rushing games ever or something? In it the had last, to have been. I mean, it yeah, was close all to All this year. I think all three have happened this year. Two for Fields, one for Jalen Hurts, as like last week. Right um, up so there, right. I absolutely – I'm firing up Justin Fields where I have him just to put like in perspective who I'd put him over. I have Trevor Lawrence against Detroit. I had to start him last week for Justin Fields. I just picked up Deshaun Watson a few weeks ago. I've been waiting for him to come in. And even still, I would play Justin Fields over either of those guys. I'd love to know, Wolfpack, what you'd do. So if anybody out there wants to answer my questions, Justin Fields versus Trevor Lawrence at Detroit versus Deshaun Watson at Houston. I, I got to choose one of them. I personally am planning to roll fields here. What about you, Truth? Who would you go for those three? This is going to fall into the category of something at the beginning of the year I never would have said in a million years. And I would play fields, assuming he's playing yeah. and relatively healthy in that situation. Watson's upside, sure. I mean, but we haven't seen the guy play in like two years <laughs> or whatever. And yeah. I mean, fields like, you know, what, floor of like 110 yards rushing? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm probably rolling that guy out there. Exactly. Um, but let's move on to two, the leadoff. So just to really quickly tell you why. One, I'm getting a lot of questions about him because it's San Fran. It is a tough defense, one of the better uh, teams in the league. But I think a lot of times defenses get a little overvalued when you can just look at what you think the script is going to be for this game. And to me, I do not see a defensive battle at all. I think Mike, uh, Mike McDaniels is an absolute genius. He obviously knows Kyle Shanahan. He knows this team really well. And I think he's going to be, be able to figure out the soft spots. So to me, I'm locking two in. I have him above Lamar Jackson, for example, coming into this week. He was the quarterback yeah, one, four, and three uh, before last week where he got benched at halftime because they were up so big. He had 29, 24, and 23 points, Tua did. We haven't seen Lamar Jackson finish in the top five since week three. And he's been outside the top 12 in the vast majority of those weeks. I got shit on quite hard after he had 43 and 40 points, Lamar Jackson. And then since then, 15, 16, 17, 11, 22, 18, 16, 23. So yeah, we were down, we were down on Lamar before the year. And then he really crammed it up our ass for a couple of weeks there. But now it, we look a I don't bit feel smarter. so bad about it anymore. No, I don't either. Been nothing but mediocre. I mean, like pretty good. He's been a low end QB one. Yeah, he's fine. Not the guy that should have been going in round four. So all that to say though, I, I love Tua. I love this game. I'm playing my Dolphins with zero hesitation. I'm playing my 49ers with zero hesitation. I think that game's going to be a blast with a ton of points scored. And Mike McDaniel's just, uh, McDaniel just kind of looks sketchy. Like he just kind of looks like one of those guys that would be standing outside like an adult video store. I don't know if they <laughs> still have those, but he just kind of Like the mo- adult movie theaters even. You remember like Right. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Like the one Kiwi and Herman got caught messing around in back in the day. <laughs> He's changing the projector back there. <laughs> <laughs> Mike with Daniel, if you're listening, we'd love to have you on the pod. Yeah, we um, love you, Mike. <laughs> right. I um, think you're a genius. Tom Brady against the Saints. You got him as your QB 14. That is two spots below the experts. I mean, you he looked old last week, man. He's looked old all year. No, nah, but I mean, week. really, last week he looked old. He was like up there in yards. Um, mm. he, I guess he still is, but I mean, all his completions are like four yards, but right. there's a lot, exactly. but there's a lot of them. <laughs> also, Rashad White, the dinks and dunks. But the big thing is he's facing New Orleans, and ever since he's gotten to the Bucks, this has been a real struggle for Brady. Uh, he had 214 yards, zero touchdowns, and interception in his first game against them. 375, four, and two interceptions, so one blow up. But other than that, 209, zero, and three picks. 239, two, and two picks. And then last time out this year, 190 yards and one touchdown, no picks, but still really, really subpar Brady against the Saints. And Brady just in general has been subpar. So he's ranked as a QB1. I don't buy it. And I'd like to have him on the stupid. if I can. Let's keep rolling. Uh, Let's make sure we get through all this so we can hit the mailbag. Uh, Your Hail Mary is Mike White. He's 17% owned. He's at the Vikings. I got a question for you real quick. Just straight up. Uh, Would you start Tom Brady or Mike White if you had them both? Honestly, my rankings have Brady higher. But 
I'd rather play white. I if think I I'd probably him. start Mike White. <laughs> yeah, I would too. So I'm going to readjust my rankings and bump this guy up. The more I think about him, the more I like. He's only 17% rostered, as you allude to. His one start so far this year, Mike White, QB6, 315 yards, three touchdowns, over 75% completion percentage, over 11 yards per attempt, because he has monster yak receivers. Remember, this is like a 49ers-inspired scheme here, and they've got the weapons to execute it. Now that we got the QB, just getting the ball out to the receivers the right way. I think it's a great scheme. I think he's a quality player with good decision-making. I think we're just going to continue to see this. Matt Jones just threw 386 yards on this Viking secondary, so Mike White absolutely could. Shootout-style field of that game, too. I really, really like Mike White this week. All right, and of course we're watching the Deshaun Watson yeah. return. Just we're we're obviously very interested in that. Um, I, I'm just going to say too, I, I get some questions on do I want to start him or not. I do have him at QB 12, so I do consider him a QB one. But I wouldn't be shocked at all. This is Houston. Let's not forget who is the worst run defense we've seen in a mile. Like Nick Chubb's probably going to run for 200 yards. They can ease Watson back in, and I bet we'll get a bomb. We might get two touchdowns or so. But I'm not expecting like. Watson returns to Houston and just eviscerates the Texans for four touchdowns. I think it's going to definitely be more of a Chubb day. And so that's why I have Justin Fields and even Trevor Lawrence ahead of Deshaun I just Watson. feel like if you're starting Watson, you're doing it a little bit out of desperation this week. You're doing it because you got to win and you don't have another great option. If you got a guy that's been playing QB1 for you, I cannot imagine dumping right. him this week, first week back for Watson. I just feel it. I mean, sure, it could pay off, but I could just, just see you getting burned. Uh, yeah, only if you've been like, sitting on Watson because your QB situation was shit. Because right. you've been sitting you, on like, like, something. Kirk Cousins yeah, or something. He absolutely is playable. He's never finished lower than the QB7 in fantasy points per game. Like He is a monster when he's clicking and rolling. It's been a while since he's yeah. been on an NFL field. They have a perfect matchup to kind of ease him in. I'm not expecting huge Watson things, but of course it's the must-watch story of the week for QBs. Uh, what is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh.